Hey everybody, Jeff with Cup of the Camper. It's uh, time to start my most current project, which is uh, swapping out my water heater, my existing gas only, uh, propane only water heater. It's the original water heater in the camper. I'm swapping that out for a, um, a electric and gas water heater that I'm going to convert to a three-way power. So I'm gonna install a 12 volt heating element and uh, a new lower wattage 110 volt AC element. And then of course, we'll have the gas uh, heat as well for, for propane. Now I talked before about ripping the whole LP system out of the camper. And I, I think I'm gonna hold off on doing that for now. I'm, I'm afraid that I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot by uh, deleting another fuel source. Um, Propane's not going to be super expensive like it is right now for hopefully ever uh, or much longer. Um, so I decided to keep the LP system in for now. I am uh, going to install a 12 volt uh, element into this water heater and uh, convert the existing, uh, I'm going to take out the existing 1400 watt element and install a, I, I believe it's a 450 watt AC 110 element. I'll show you what I've got going on. So this is the original gas only, uh, propane only water heater. Um, it's a six gallon uh, Atwood water heater. It's been great, but I want more power sources uh, with, with propane being pretty expensive right now, relatively expensive right now. Uh, I want to swap this out for a newer unit that does, uh, like I mentioned before, AC and gas, and then I'm gonna add a 12 volt element as well. Now, one of the things that I've realized with this water heater um, compared to my new, water heater. Uh, this is the Atwood Dometic, or it's really just called Dometic now. It's the WH6GEA model, and it's got the gas uh, and the electric 1400-watt uh, heating element here. Uh, I'm going to take this out. Uh, this heating element's going to come out, and in its place, I'm putting in a 200-watt 12 volt DC element with a built-in thermostat. So this will, this is an all stainless steel body element with a thermostat, that's that third pipe that you see coming out there. Uh, this is going to be installed in this location. And then I've got the Camco hybrid heat, uh, 120 volt element, which is, um, let's see, I think it's 425 watts. I'll have to double check that. But this heating element gets wired into the drain plug uh, spout, uh, the drain plug outlet on the water heater. And of course the wires get rerouted to a thermostat that gets mounted to the tank, up against the tank here. So I will be bypassing uh, the stock uh, thermostat for the electric side. And of course the 12 volt heating element has its own thermostat that I can that I can adjust. So in order to do this mod, I'm going to have to take everything off of this flange. I have to take everything off this flange, uh, the board, the pressure temperature relief valve, the gas valve, all the brackets, the, the AC, um, the AC element, all the wiring and grommets and stuff, all the little screws, everything has to come out so I can get this black flange off. And the reason why I have to do that is I have to cut a larger hole where this, uh, where the 12 volt element's gonna go into the, into the tank, uh, into the body of the, of the water heater tank. So the hole that's behind this cover, behind this cover is where the element is and uh, some wires and, and a switch. The, the hole is, it, it's, I, I believe it's about a one and three quarters or a two inch diameter. And, and I need to do, um, you know, a little bit larger. I think this is about a, a three inch diameter. 
So all that stuff has to come off of, of this piece here so I can get in there with a the hole saw and cut that out um, a little bit bigger. And then I can get that thing mounted in there, wired up. Now I also purchased the Dometic uh, switch for electric and gas. That's what uh, will you know, switch on and off the, the AC 120 volt uh, element and the gas. And then the hybrid heat, this is really meant for water heaters that are gas only, so you can uh, have AC 120 volt uh, heating element as well. It's not as powerful as the, the stock 1400 watt element, obviously, in here, uh, this being the, the Camco hybrid heat being a lower wattage uh, element. Uh, it'll take a lot longer to heat up, but it'll give me the option uh, to do so. So getting back to the, the stock water heater, this is a, a larger cutout. The original water heater and cutout is uh, quite a bit wider, I think by about three inches, uh, than the newer style uh, Dometic water heaters. This is a, about a, just a little under 13 inch square. And uh, the one on the truck camper is, I believe, almost 19 inches wide by uh, 13 and a half inches tall or 13 inches tall. So what you have to do is buy this retrofit kit. I know this sounds like a whole big pain in the butt it, it, and it, it, it is a little bit, but I wanted to have that option of, of more ways to heat my water. Um, so this Dometic kit um, comes with, this is a retrofit kit. So the smaller water heater fits in the larger hole. Um, these little wings get mounted uh, to the sides of the opening on the camper and the water heater flange mounts um, to these wings. And then they send you a new door um, that's obviously the, the same size as the opening, the original opening on the camper, but it has the, the vent location and the clasp in the correct location. Um, it didn't come with a screen, so I've already done a little bit of a modification to this by adding that little screen there. If you've seen my other videos on uh, uh, using this screen on my on my furnace and on my air conditioner, this is that same stuff, and I just used some uh, some JB Weld epoxy to adhere it to the back side of of this metal door. Of course, I sanded this area really well with some 80 grit sandpaper to rough it up to give this epoxy something to grab onto. So, and then I just have to convert or uh, swap over my clasp um, and the, the little metal hinges that are on the original door. So that is the next project that I'm starting here um, in the next few days. I will uh, have some more videos on how I'm gonna do this and show how I'm gonna do it if you wanna do it yourself by adding um, you know, either a 12 volt element uh, to your water heater or if you've got an all gas water heater, how to add that hybrid kit from Camco. So it should be a pretty neat experiment. And uh, yeah, give me a couple more or at least one more option um, for uh, heating my water. So this compartment will still be used to house my air conditioner that I'm going to be installing. Uh, that'll that'll live in this compartment with uh, with a little gas strut that holds this door open when I want to use it for the exhaust. Um, the uh, the propane cylinders that I'll be using I'm just going to go with uh, a 20 pound uh, portable bar one of those barbecue tanks and <clears throat> I'm either going to take this fitting um, take this fitting here and put in uh, a quick connect that I can you know just plug right into I, I I don't know if I can go off of this T I haven't really figured that out yet but somewhere in this area uh, that's accessible when it's on the truck because I can I can reach up into this area and, and plug something in if I need to um, do a, a quick connect to one of those 20 pound uh, barbecue tanks 
Um, and I will still use a, uh, you know, uh, the appropriate propane regulator um, for the 11 inches of water column pressure. It'll still be this style of um, regulator, only probably just a single, uh, not, not a double um, auto switch over. And I am still planning on removing my furnace and having the diesel heater in there because they are more efficient you know, really the, the gas hog here is the furnace. They, they burn a lot of, of propane. So, um, you know, the, the water heater is pretty efficient on propane. Um, once it gets up to temperature, the insulation on these tanks uh, uh, and added insulation that I put in will keep that water, uh, you know, right around that temperature that it needs to be. And with the solar, um, or sorry, the 12 volt element running off of solar, uh, once my batteries are charged, all of that excess energy will be diverted to that 12 volt element to keep that water warm uh, where it needs to be once my batteries are charged. So in, instead of wasting all that excess solar energy, you know, through the through the charge controller and in the heat sink, you know, it, any extra power that's coming through the through the solar panels just basically gets dissipated as heat and wasted. Um, through that heat sink. So this way I can actually use that energy to keep my water warm uh, in my water tank uh, after my batteries are charged. So that's a cool one. Um, lots of testing to do there, but should be pretty fun. So anyway, we'll uh, catch you guys on the next video. Later.